Hi, and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video, we're going to try to apply a set of rules here, a flow chart, a good flow chart, honestly. It's quite a good resource. It's uh, provided by uh, Moody's Gartner. It's a publicly available document. The link is right here. Uh, this document is designed to help navigate the very complicated new tax on split income rules. And we're looking at these rules as they are in the summer of 2018. It would not surprise me at all if we see different iterations of these rules in the not too distant future. And if necessary, we may have to update this video from time to time. Now, before I get too far here, first off, this is not tax advice. All I am doing in this video is showing you how to use the flow chart. You'll see that in fact, even with the flow chart, there is still a great deal of uncertainty in certain circumstances. And this is going to require the advice, the input of good qualified tax professionals, I like the good folks at Moody's Gartner with which, with whom, sorry, I have no affiliation. If the Tossie rules do apply, okay, if these rules do happen to apply, then here's what you're going to get. You're going to have income taxed at the top marginal tax rate, and it is not able to be reduced by any tax credit except the dividend tax credit and the uh, disability tax credit. Only those two tax credits would apply and disability tax credit, of course, most people don't have access to. Really, the end result here, you're paying tax at top marginal tax rate on any income to which TOSI applies. In most circumstances, that's going to remove any benefits of income splitting. It's an important set of questions as to whether or not these rules apply, but it's difficult to know the answer. As stated, not tax advice, just showing you how to use this chart. Okay. We've got four different scenarios we're going to work through. We'll start off with our top one here, this couple, both in their 30s, uh, car dealership where it's incorporated. I should mention that here. It's incorporated, 60-40 uh, ownership. There's no holding company in place. Only the 60% owner works in the business. We're wondering whether the tax on split income rules would apply to the 40% owner. We're gonna pop over to the chart and see if we can follow the chart to give us an answer to this. First question is pretty easy. In most cases, I think. Are you an adult who is resident in Canada or are you under 18 with a parent resident in Canada? Yes, this is true. Split income. In this case, do you earn any of the following types of split income? We can start off right with A here, a non-public corporation, that's our auto dealership, uh, taxable dividends and shareholder benefits. We're concerned with taxable dividends here. That applies, we're not concerned about any of the others, but the others would, um, would all basically come down to the same thing. Can we trace this back to a small business resident in Canada? Now, I will take a moment here, I'll just highlight something. We're going to look at a definition right now that comes up later on. This is the uh, related business definition. See a little asterisk here, and we're just going to use that asterisk to pop down to the bottom of the page and see what a related business is. A related business means that a family member, a related person, owns 10% or more of the business and if you're separated, then you're not deemed related for this purpose. So that's our related business. We're gonna see that come up again. That's basically meaning that we're dealing with a, a family business. Okay, so we're at a yes so far. We're still 
in the range where Tossie would apply. We're looking to get out of Tossie. We're looking to get over here to the Tossie rules do not apply to you box. We're not going to do it here though. Uh, under this set of questions, do any of the following apply? If any one of these applied, then we would uh, pop over to the, the box we want to be in. Are you under 25 and received the property as a result of a parent? And then we have um, are you under 25 and received it as a result of death of any person and you're either a student or you're eligible for disability tax credit? Neither of these apply here. There's nobody under 25 in this instance, but those are really in the inheritance uh, exemptions. And then we have the separation exemption, another one here. So a couple places already where we've looked at separation. Um, again, uh, deemed disposition on the death. And that's not what applies here. A fairly big exemption that we don't deal with in any of these scenarios uh, attached to the lifetime capital gains exemption. This um, item E on this list, item ECHO here, is designed to allow the lifetime capital gains exemption to still be used in uh, family farming and family fishing type businesses. And then the age 65 exemption, the retirement exemption. Uh, none of these apply here. We're on the no side age 18 or over, and now the question is, does the income come from a related business? Sure it does, that's the whole idea here, that it's a business that this person's spouse owns. So our 40% shareholder, our minority position, owns 40% of a business that their spouse owns 60% of, absolutely that is a related business. Now we continue working through the chart here. And we know that related business applies. And now the question is, does excluded business apply? Excluded business would allow you, if you work in the business, 20 hours a week, regular, continuous, substantial basis is the, the rough threshold here. There's other ways to meet this, but 20 hours is the, it's called bright line test. And that is not the case. Now we follow the fork, the fork down here, age 25 or over and we keep working through excluded shares. This is what you're generally going to be looking for in family business situations. We've got a husband and wife in business together is the excluded shares rule. And let's see how we do with excluded shares. Okay, uh, first off is any of this, and you have to meet all four. It's all conditions that must be met here. And we'll see as we work through this that quite a few businesses will not meet all conditions. Okay, first off, uh, services business. I don't believe, and this is my interpretation, I could very easily be wrong here. This ties into my comment earlier about tax advice. I don't believe that an auto dealership would be considered a services business. Now, maybe, if the majority of the revenues for the business are from the uh, mechanics in the back, uh, who knows, maybe that's a services business, but I would suggest that most car dealerships, that's probably not going to be the case. Let's assume that it's at least for the time being not a services business. A uh, corporation is not a professional corporation. That is definitely not the case for our auto dealership. That would be true for an accountant or a lawyer or a doctor, those are all professional corporations. Uh, you personally own shares. This is the what's called the votes and value exemption. And votes and value exemption says you own 10% or more of the votes and value of the corporation. We're good to go here. And finally, uh, this was a little bit confusing just how it's written here. It's confusing in all cases. It doesn't really matter. We can't get around it. But this is really a rule that's designed to eliminate uh, holding company structures from being able to split income. Uh, less than 10% of the income of the corporation was derived from a related business. That has to be a yes answer. In this case, all the income was, was uh, originated from this business, from the actual car dealership and therefore less than 10% of the income was derived from a related business. That's a true story. We have four check marks here. I guess I can put them all on the left side. And that means the yes 
applies and we get to where we want to go. We can follow that uh, box up and we can see that for this particular instance for our car dealership example, the TOSI rules do not apply. Okay, so we've got good news for that couple. Assuming that my interpretations are correct, which I would absolutely want to confirm with a qualified tax professional. And I suspect that we'll have some questions about this come through the courts in the first four or five years after these rules come out. And as I previously mentioned, I would not be surprised to see rule changes here. Okay, then we have a couple both in their 40s, this time a sheet metal manufacturing business. Again, almost certainly not a services business. This is where you're actually bending metal or whatever the case is to generate your revenues. And uh, shares are held through a holding company. And the holding company in this instance owns 100% of the business. I'm sure some of you have already figured out what the outcome is going to be here based on what we just looked at. Let's just pop back to the chart and follow this through. Okay. Again, same deal, specified individual, and we are in this boat. We can follow the yes track. Again, non-public corporation, and we can follow the yes track. Do any of the following apply? There's no death here. There's no separation. It's not a capital gain. We can, nobody's over age 65 or on the no side, age 18 or over. Okay, now we're going to be on the uh, related business question here. So we age 18 or over, related business. Is the income or gain in question derived from a related business for the year? We know it is. It's again, somebody who is related to this person who owns the shares in question. And now excluded business and Again, our 40% shareholder does not work in the business and therefore would not meet this 20 hours per week test. We're no, we're age 25 or over, we're still not into the green box. And now let's pop down and see if we do end up in the green box. Okay, excluded shares. Less than 90% was from providing services. I'm fairly certain that our sheet metal business is not going to be considered a services business. Although again, tax professional, proper advice, all that good stuff. Uh, not a prof corp. Uh, you personally own shares that give you at least 10% votes in value. Yes, that's true. This is where we're going to run into our problem. That in fact, in this case, all the income was generated from a related business and not carried on by the corporation. And therefore, we have to put an X here. And now we've got a problem. We don't get to use the yes answer. We don't get to go up to the green box. And you can see now that there's no way to get to the green box that was up at the left there anyways. And we pop down to now the reasonable return question. And this is, it's already difficult. I'm sure everybody can appreciate how challenging these rules already are. This is where it gets really difficult. Now we have to determine whether or not the amount of dividend income that the non-operator spouse is generating is reasonable in the circumstances. And we have to look at, okay, work performed, which we already saw that person's not working in the business, that probably doesn't help. Property contributed directly or indirectly, hard to see. I, I'm sure you can find circumstances, but I would say most situations, you probably don't have any of this happening. That's where that 40% uh, owner would have had to contribute some property in order to make the business run. Um, risks assumed. Again, the non-owner operator spouse, it's not their activities that lead to the failure or success of the business. That probably doesn't work here. 
Uh, total amounts paid to or for the benefit of the individual. Uh, that's just saying that we're taking into account how much income that person generates. And any other factors that may be relevant. So tough to get anything here. Now, reasonable portion, if this person, and this is um, sort of how this works roughly, this is very rough, but if the non-owner operator spouse had contributed some of their own capital of their own origination, this is this, uh, your, con your uh, contribution of arm's length capital, then there might be proportionately on the amount of dividend income generated, no tossy. But I would suggest that the way the rules are written and with most likely circumstances here, we probably have the full amount of dividend or very close to it as uh, subject to tossy. And then we're going to have, as I mentioned earlier, income tax at the highest marginal tax rate. And that really owes to the fact that there's that holding company in place. Okay. Let's go to our next scenario. And our next scenario, we have an accounting practice. Again, I think some of you are probably already thinking ahead here. And in this instance, both accountants, okay, so mom and dad or whatever the combination is here. Um, they both accountants, they both worked in the business for a while, but seven years ago, mom left to raise the kids, has not come back. Ownership here is 50-50. Uh, okay, well, we already know, I think, that we're looking at a specified individual, non-public corporation, taxable dividends, good to go. Uh, we don't have any exemption for separation or death here. It's not a capital gain and nobody's over the age of 65. We can keep working our way down the chart. Age 18 or over, yes, related business. We do have, in fact, a related business and excluded business, no, because not working in the business. All right, and this is where we're gonna get to where we have to be again. Do the excluded shares question or the excluded shares rules apply? And uh, services almost certainly an accounting business is providing services. And even if that's not true, it's probably a profession. It's almost certainly going to, I can't see any other way to do it, to run as anything other than a professional corporation. We have two no's right away here. And it doesn't even matter then about votes and value or about the holding company scenario. We know that we are on the no side. And now we can just follow that down. Again, work performed, contribution of property. Now, this might get an exemption here, the uh, contribution of property. And this is where, again, I would want to lean on a tax professional to get an answer to this because it is actually possible that both started the business with some of their own capital. And maybe there's a portion here that might be considered reasonable and to which Tossi would not apply. I can't make a definitive answer there. We'd have to know many, many more facts. And honestly, you would need a better level of understanding of these rules than I probably will ever have, or at least I think that most of us will have until we start to see some tax rulings. Okay, and then we will look to our last scenario, which is our retired couple. Again, I'm sure some of you can see this coming already. We've got a couple both in their 70s, retired doctor and spouse, all income passive, and corpus 50-50, no holding company in place. All right, let's have a look. Again, same start that we've always had. Yes, adult, resident in Canada. Yes, we have a non-public corporation with taxable dividends. And right here, we're going to see 
Do any of the following apply? Is your spouse age 65 or older? Yes, or deceased, but they would be age 65 or older. Um, sorry, or deceased, just if they're deceased. And if so, if the amount were to be received by your spouse, would the split income have been excluded from uh, TOSI under this flow chart? So we have the age 65 exemption. And, and if it were ex, uh, received by the spouse, sorry. So that means that the actual physician in this case would have had the income uh, not subject to TOSI. It's a little bit of a funny rule, but it holds up. It basically just means that that person would have had income, that your spouse would have income that wouldn't be TOSI income. And that's true. It's the other person that we're concerned with here. So we do have uh, item F applies here, we get a big yes. And this is the retirement exemption, TOSI rules do not apply. What a nightmare. All right, that is our TOSI rules. I do not envy tax professionals who are going to have to navigate these waters. I don't envy the financial advisors. They're gonna have clients coming to them with these questions. And uh, I speak from my own position here. I do not envy the business owners we're going to have to figure out what's okay and what's not okay in their businesses. Let's just summarize here real quickly. Again, this is not tax advice. This is very general, just intended to uh, show us enough maybe to be dangerous. But here's what I would summarize about these circumstances. That for this couple in their 30s with the car dealership, no hold co, uh, probably no tossy here. For this next couple with the Hold Co. and the sheet metal manufacturing company, Tossie probably applies. For the accounting practice, uh, Tossie probably applies, but maybe some exempt income depending on contributions of capital. And finally, for our physician and spouse, probably no TOSI. Almost certainly no TOSI here. I just can't see that many scenarios where it's going to apply here. All right, I hope that that helps. That is a very complicated set of rules. Thankfully, there is a uh, reasonably clear chart to help us navigate that to some extent, but there's so much ambiguity or uncertainty there that I just can't see that we're going to have clear answers on a lot of these questions, especially down at that bottom left corner of that flow chart, uh, at least for a couple of years and maybe longer. Uh, thank you very much and enjoy your continued studies.